remember when we were strong. Back in the days before King Tenebre and his royal guard, and the people of Amosrin took up their own arms for fun and profit. Before all that, air was just us, the Viridian outriders. We kept the roads and trails safe and secure, with homes and forts scattered about and locales civilized and not. Time passed, and we have been replaced. And yet, I hear the rumblings and murmurs of the roads being less safe than they had been. Monsters sniffing around in smaller towns and magic acting oddly. Who knows? Maybe we'll be needed again. Hello and welcome to Another Path. My name is Chase and I continue to be your GM. Today, the Outriders prepare for their journey to the seat of Taggart. Thank you to our backers, Roger, Patrick, and Joel for their support. If you like what you hear, consider donating to us at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia, and maybe even consider checking out some of the other shows on the network. And with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. There's a bar in the barracks, or adjacent to the barracks. Mm -hmm. It's called the Crypt Keeper. Ooh. Oh yeah, no, it, that is one hundred percent in the crypt. The Ooh. crypt keeper is there. One, yes, no, that's good. Asked. Yeah, real good. Yeah, no, happening. It, the cannon, well struck. <laughs> I hit a very palpable hit indeed. <laughs> there's, there's and I feel like Cecil has been petitioning them to make tea cocktails. <laughs> Look, you can tr make a hard tea. It's fine. Have you considered a matcha beer? Oh. oh. Hey, Chris, are you listening? Hey, <laughs> hey Chris. Chris, don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> Tea beer. You know, that that idea is just crazy enough for Ice Deer. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. We can be bought. <laughs> we, uh, we already have been. Oh, shit. It's not hey, really great. even being bought. Hey, like, great we're, job, we're Chris. just partners. <laughs> Good work, Chris. <laughs> hey, Chris, this is not the next idea for the next beer. Do it. Do it, you coward. <laughs> I got a question, though. Yeah? Katie's in Aladrin. What color is she? Whoa, Justin, you can't just fucking ask people <laughs> what color they are. I can when it's a break. <laughs> <laughs> We're still recording. Um, uh, Go she, for Edward Has it been established? That? I don't know. No, it hasn't been established. She I, feels I, like a spring or a summer. I was going to say spring. I was going to say summer. I, I was leaning summer into autumn, so we'll go summer. Okay. okay. Happy medium. So, like, orange? Yeah, orangish, yeah, reddish. Like, yeah. Reddish. I think spring's typically green. Yeah, yeah. that's about yeah. right. Let me see. That I think that's an autumn Aladrin. Yeah, I think that's more fall. Uh, I think it's, yeah. I, I was very deep in Aladrin lore for this a long spring, time. Thanks, of, right? thanks to Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. Spring's, yeah not, spring's not, pretty green. Not, Winter's very blue. Yeah, I, I, yeah, so I picture her being a late summer, so kind of an orange. Orange, cool. yeah. I think that. But with orange, but with the uh, freckles. Yes, absolutely. Cute. Absolutely. She and Harper have kind of matching aesthetics in that in that yeah, front. A little bit. A little bit. Because Harper, we, it has been recently canonized. That's not the way to say that. But recently canonized. <laughs> that's a religious thing. That's, um, no, that's Saint that's, Talk. Yeah, um, but that, that's uh, a terrible. Podcast. Harper. Harper is officially like strawberry blonde. Mm. Um, with, oh yeah, with the frecks. A couple of days of rest pass for the three of you um, before you receive official word. True to the night slash high captain's word, in about six weeks, there is going to be an official excursion from the crypt of the Viridian Outriders of Bering up to the seat. Okay. Uh, the three of you are invited, except, of course, for you. Arabin, you are less invited and more voluntold that you will be going to the seat for your official initiation into the Outriders, no longer a squire, but as an Outrider, likely officially going to be inducted into one of the uh, actual track. I hope it's Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to change your name. <laughs> Either as a knight, a ranger, or a scribe. 
likely a scribe. A paper pusher? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which no. is the track of a steward. Oh, no. <laughs> you have a good bit of time to prepare yourselves and do what you need to do within the city of Bering before you set out. So, Squire, what are you doing during your time? Uh, so, Arabin, he went to the library with Lenny. Mm-hmm. I feel like because he knows what he was looking for and he found some things, I'm going to guess he got kind of freaked out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think he's going to take a step away from that. Okay. Uh, sort of go on the the mistake that all young people made to just ignore the problem mm-hmm. when it exists. Yep. And uh, in this time, Arabin is around more in the crypt, uh, is actually talking to people every now and then, going to the Steeping Scrolls just to have some tea, mm-hmm. and just being sort of different than he's been since he got here. A little more outgoing. Yes. Okay. Real quick, I want you to give me a wisdom saving throw. I want to see how far into your studies you get before you nope the hell out. Because I think that is a important distinction to make. Okay. 14. With a 14, after you, you work on your penmanship for a while, Lenny comes back with uh, several scrolls tagged with your name and identification and whatnot for you to read through and you start reading and there are two uh, essentially tracks that he puts you down and they're the ones that he indicated initially the depths below which is kind of what you were leaning towards as well as the virtues and you start with the virtues because that seems softer but it seems weird at the same time the virtues are a kind of a weird subset of fates that exist. It is not a worship of gods or of the arch devils. They're something that literally exists in between. It is a, a pantheon made up of both celestials and fiends. They are called wage, wax, ward, wit, wonder, and watch. These are essentially virtues and concepts that people try to embody, whether it is the waging of a battle, the waxing and moving of nimbleness, warding of protection, wits of word, wondering of the world, and watching of everything around that person. It is something that resonates with a lot of people, but very few people actually really take a deep dive into. Um, Although it is known that people who do follow these entities do gain some power from them, though it is difficult to make that initial contact. And then you start looking into the depths below, and you get weirded and freaked out almost immediately you start looking into it and give me give me a religion check so that's a straight roll so that's an 18 with an 18 you start delving into these scrolls and 18's real good and so with an 18 you find a reference a couple of times to something that You've heard of a spark of divinity before. And as you read through, you find reference to its antithesis. The infernal core. Oh, no. Something of pure id. A powerful source that is everything that makes up what people just want. It is not what people need. It is desire and pure selfishness distilled into a pockmarked orb bleeding with fire 
And that's the point where you immediately are like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, I sort of just close the scroll and I'm like, all right, Lenny, that was great. I'll see you later. And I <laughs> run. <laughs> and you run. Oh, God. And you put those away. You tear your names off of those scrolls as you're leaving. So they are put away and you don't know where they go. And you find yourselves at uh, Cecil Sleeping Scrolls. It's been, it's been about two weeks or so. And Katie is kind of bopping around as she gets in. Um, Ava, um, she's a, a human uh, girl, 16 years old, you know, a couple younger years younger than you. Uh, she is behind the counter, um, essentially trying to, like, learn to manage the books while uh, Katie is doing the more, like, mundane tasks. Uh, she catches your eyes. Uh, you walk in. Oh, hey, Arabin. How you doing? I'm all right. Good stuff. What can I get for you? Uh, let's do an accidentally spicy. You got it. Hold on. I need to jump in here because it's, it's been a couple of weeks. Yes. Is Toast Morning on the menu? There would have been a note left for if Arabin <sighs> or Harper show up to have them sample the new stuff. Let's go ahead. I want to cut over back to you then in that case, Cecil. Oh, God. Because you do have a measure of control, as we've already established. You can use Wither and Bloom to kind of speed certain processes along. Yep. Do you mind if I butt in for just a second? We're playing in the space. Go for it. Butts all over the place. Because I just need to say on behalf of the audience, hey, Chase. Yeah? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> Five years you couldn't tell us about this shit. All right. An All right, infernal Greenlee. core? What? A pockmarked orb what? of desire? Wreathed in flames? <laughs> Greenly, I remember that epilogue. Okay, first off, it's bleeding with flames. Okay. <laughs> Much better. And second of all, moving on. Yeah. Cecil, I would like you to go ahead and roll me a... It's fine. I have a plan. What? <laughs> For reasons that I will not elaborate on, I may have practiced my Jackson earlier today. Holy shit. If it doesn't come up, I will never elaborate. This will be my Magnus blood. <laughs> Cecil, I would like you to roll me... We'll just do it a straight Arcana check. 19? Okay. Plus 4. With a 23... Jumping back, Katie is like, absolutely, wait a minute. The toast mortem is just about ready, if you'd like to try that. Oh, absolutely. Katie nods and uh, is not put off by how enthusiastic you are <laughs> and uh, goes and uh, reaches to an unlabeled uh, jar up on the counter and pulls some white and black leaves from like a mason jar there's not a lot in there uh but there's enough and she screws the lid back on pops it back up and uh brings you a mug of this tea it has a aromatic earthy scent would have left instructions that it must be consumed straight no cream no sugar no Ab honey absolutely i swear to god i thought you were about to say served with toast <laughs> Avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. No, it's toast with grave E. Shit, Greenly. <laughs> oh, gosh. <sighs> uh, uh, eight out of ten pun would not eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to run a business here. <laughs> Could be good gravy. You don't know. We definitely floated that like during a night at the bar, like having a drink. And we're just like, nah. She brings you the tea. No cream, no sugar, no honey, no nothing. I take a sip, and I sit there for a second, and I go, Kitty. Yeah. Cancel that accidentally, Spicy. This is my new tea. <laughs> well, from what I understand, it is your new tea, isn't it? Yeah. You helped, at least. And it is amazing. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty good. Damn straight. Talk about the fruits of your labors. <laughs> I am just engulfed in this tea. Yep. I drink it very quickly. Mm-hmm. And I want another one. She brings you another. 
I think I think for the first handful of mugs, you're you're comping to yeah. oh for sure the crew oh for sure because it's uh it you know we got to make sure like it's good absolutely right? like this is the quality no, you're, check. You, you, she brings you another one, and the warmth of the tea almost makes you forget how hot the amulet glowed against your chest when you read the words "Infernal Core." Griffin has pulled his phone out very distinctively. I don't know if you're trying to find the Infernal Core because you're no, not no, going to no, find no, it online. No, 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 no. That's, that's a chase exclusive right no, there. No, 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 no. There's just a thing I do during Monster Hearts when scary lore gets dropped and this I pull up because it's not in the like Zoom. I pull up the the uh, red siren emoji and I posted a bunch. <laughs> oh, gotcha. So I was going to post that in the Discord real quick. Okay, but gotcha. But since now that you've called attention to it, I will just share I'm, it I'm sorry. You I'm no, sorry. I've ruined your bit. No, that's that's really it's honestly a better bit. But I always post that because that's this is fucking red alert worthy. Yeah, it's a little scary. Anyways, I'll say as as you said that Arabin also remembers that the entity hasn't spoken mm-hmm. since that night. Sure, which is unusual. They've been quiet, but he's afraid that means it might be biding its time. Could be. You have also haven't addressed it. Oh yeah, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, okay. The okay. thought just slips into his mind mm-hmm. of like, that's weird, right? It's weird. That's all. It's weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meanwhile. Why do we have to have the Edgelord Warlock? Why? Why? Mm. Why, why couldn't we just have a nice time with some tea? Because it's good TV. Good. It is good TV. It's it is good TV. damn good TV. It's good radio. It's, good. it's even better radio because there's no visual element. Yes, Sir Chase. Harper. Yeah. What you doing? I think my main project is going out to Miller's Pond and checking out the wagon and doing a lot of like detect magic, identify time with it Mm -hmm. to figure out how this enchantment works on this wagon Mm -hmm. that we stashed and seeing if I can if there's any way that I can replicate that for Ignis's sort of internal components. Absolutely. If If I can add some interdimensional space Uh, into his shell to give me some more room to work with. Sure. So I've got a thought of how this will work. Sure. First, I need you to roll me an Arcana check. What you're rolling for right now is how many chances you have to make this work. I rolled pretty low. That's an eight. Okay. With an eight, you have two shots at this. Are you trying to move the enchantment or copy it? What Do I have any, any inkling as to what would be easier? Because I don't care about this wagon. If sure. moving it is easier and I'm not trying to duplicate it, then I'm fine with that. This wagon can suffer. I don't care about the wagon. Give me a straight int check. Fuck me. Oh, wait. It's a nat one. I'm a halfling. You're a halfling. <laughs> Reroll oh. that. I'm a lucky son bitch. Straight int is going to be a 12. You know that copying it is harder but safer. <laughs> moving it is easier but you could very likely crush yourself in this wagon. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Oh. Yeah, fuck it. Let's try to move it. You're moving it. Let's okay. Move it. So you've got two shots at moving it. Okay. What do you, what check? Argue the check to me. This feels like Arcana. Okay. This is Harper digging into the specifics of how a piece of magic works mm-hmm. and the study of it and and kind of figuring out the translation of from space to space. Okay. It feels very academic, um, which is new to her, but I am pretty savvy with Arcana. Okay. What is your, uh, what do you add to it for Arcana? I'm at a plus five. You're at a plus five. Okay. You need a 17 On in order. Die? No, total. Okay. You need a 17. So 12 or higher. Yeah, 12 or higher. I have two shots? You got two shots. Should I go ahead and just roll two dice? No, we'll do we'll, we'll do this dramatic. Okay. One at a time. First roll. That's a 14 on the die. So that is going to be a 19 total. What does it look like moving this enchantment? Um, It begins as... It is a combination of some sort of I don't want to go straight to the idea of like runic glyphs but some sort of arcane language Mm -hmm. whether that almost maybe even like numerical like some sort of combination between like a like numbers in a different script Mm -hmm. um, 
that is used frequently in magics, like a very geometric, absolutely uh, magical approach, kind of a non-Euclidean geometry. Yeah, and it works in the form. I think Harper's truly sketching blueprints. Mm-hmm. Like the first way, the first step to understanding this wagon is she sketches out like a blueprint of the wagon itself and its physical dimensions and like the materials it's made out of and then goes internal into the enchantments and how that overlays on top of the existing blueprints. And then it becomes, how do I bend the physical lines of the blueprint to match Ignis's dimensions yep. while maintaining the cohesion of the order of the numbers and making sure all of the math checks out essentially it's do it's it's equation work truly. Absolutely. You 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 start doing this equation work and you realize there has to be some sort of a tangible element to this as well. There has to be yeah. some physicality in, inscribed into the wagon itself to give it this this property of expansion. And you get in there one day and you start uh, it, literally like carefully but literally dismantling the interior of the wagon. Mhm. And you find etched into the doorway of the wagon this kind of script that you've been reverse engineering. It's underneath, like, threshold? the threshold of it. You start Ooh. pulling it up, and it's actually embedded into the wagon itself. And you see it the way the geometry is etched and carved in. It looks like leaves scattered about. Huh. It looks like the chaos of the leaves, this weird kind of chaos magic is causing the interior of this wagon to expand as if a scattering breeze. Not much, but enough. Well, that's interesting. So what you are able to do huh. is literally to take to transfer it. You figure out like what parts of it are the most important, mm-hmm. and you are able to carefully, without crushing yourself, <laughs> excise those pieces of wood. Because you can see part of the actual script isn't just the latitude and longitude on which it's written, but also the depth in the wood. Ooh. So that depth is incredibly important. Yeah. And you being, what, level three? Yeah. Do not trust yourself to replicate that at this point. (laughs) That is so hard. Yeah, for sure. For the safer method, you would have been looking for minimally a 23 to do this. Yowza. So you are able to excise this wood, (laughs) the important pieces, and embed it into the steel of Ignis. Yeah. And in doing so... You effectively have a bag of holding inside Ignis. Yes! <laughs> I Before, it's worth mentioning that before I do any actual work on Ignis, I think I like... Actually, here's a question, Chase, because yeah. Ignis is like a construct, like mm-hmm. in terms of game statistics. Sure. I can't like power him down, can I? Yes. Okay. I, w- I would say that you have the ability to like put him into like a torpor or like a sleep mode. Okay. Then I would do that and I would like, because I don't want to, it's like doing surgery on someone who's conscious. Like, I don't want to, I'm going to be like. You got to at least twilight him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, so buddy, we're going <laughs> to. I think Harper's so afraid to no, do this as no. well, but like is is going to like put him in in sleep mode Mm -hmm. and it's going to be like the most careful she's ever been on Mm -hmm. doing this and like if there's a moment that i would be risking harming him permanently i'm gonna pull the plug but like i think she feels pretty secure with this yeah no you've you are confident that you can do this and then once i'm done i like wake him up and Mm -hmm. do basically do like a diagnostics check i'm like are you good how you feeling yep left nostril for good right nostril for bad yep uh Left nostril. He's good. Oh, okay. Smoke comes out of the left nostril. <laughs> and when you wake him up, you hear ding, ding, do, do, do. No. He's not a Pokemon. <laughs> He's his own unique special creature, and I love him with my whole heart. Hey, what's Cecil been up to? You're not going to believe this. A daily calisthenics routine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, that makes sense. You got to get back into shape. Just gotta get back into shape. Oh shit! Gotta get back into fighting shape. Mm-hmm. Because Cecil once was something, right? Decades ago. Yep. In my head, and I don't know if this is in the show or not. In my head, 
Cecil is severely leveled then. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That checks out. Yeah. So um, they've got some work to do. Yep. Um, so uh, one thing Cecil uh, gets Harper to help with yeah. um, is, so um, I've got a lot of reading to do, mm-hmm. right, at my desk and everything, but I'm trying to be a bit more active. Sure. So um, I'm wondering if you could create something for me at my desk. I'm going to raise the desk a bit, and then I'd love it if there was, like, a bit of uh, a bit of sidewalk or something that could, like, go in a circle. Right, like underneath the desk, so I can get my steps in while I'm doing my reading. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> um, so uh, Chase, I would like to canonically invent the treadmill. Uh huh. Uh huh. Do I need to roll for that, or what's up? What's the story on treadmills, specifically treadmill desks? It can't be yeah. too difficult once the idea is there. I figured out locomotion for a gigantic metal tortoise. So, like, what are we talking? Yeah, Arcana yeah, or I, yeah, I, I Smith tools. What's the deal? Arcana with advantage. Oh yeah, brother. Twenty-one. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Whatever. You know what? This is Art great. Is a lie. Nothing is real. <laughs> this actually gives me kind of a great idea for. Like an all-terrain mode for Ignis. God. Damn right it does. <laughs> I'm gonna give the tortoise here, track. Hey, I'm gonna hey, give. Hey Chase. Hey, gri- hey Griff. Not to spoil hold on, anything. Hold on, Griff. Bump set. Yep. Oh, there you go. Oh, spike that home. Tortoise I f- tank. I tortoise think I fig- tank. I think I figured out stairs. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> so, uh, Harper, thank you. It's been a delight. Do you have a name for this thing? Hmm. I've been calling it the desk stepper. Desk stepper's pretty good, but like. Hmm. How about the um hmm. indoor rolling sidewalk is a bit long. Yeah. Cycle stepper? Cycle stepper. Um Cecil's steeping cycle stepper. Bless you. <laughs> I almost actually sneezed when you said that. That was weird. That is quite strange. Hmm. The the infinity walker. Hmm. That's not bad. The um I'll work on it. We'll workshop right, we'll, it. We'll take it back. Yeah. We'll, okay. All right. That's great. I imagine I imagine this is happening while uh Arabin is also in the in the steeping scrolls and Katie just gives him a look like Yeah, he's not saying a word. He <laughs> yep. is, he notices he's just like sip the tea, sip the tea. <laughs> None of our business. And she winks. Pinky's out. Um, Cecil, uh, spends a lot of time in his office, but is also dedicated to, um, regaining his physical strength. Mm -hmm. Um, he is, uh, doing just stupid amounts of research. He's pouring through everything he has, um, and then everything they can find in the crypt as well. Anything Lenny has very specifically looking for references to underground cities, to lost architecture, to, um... We talked about this being like the specific polyhedral shape, mm-hmm. um, and uh, Cecil has the rubbings and stuff from it. So he's looking for all of these things, um, and is fairly confident that he would have remembered anything big if it stuck out. So he's he he. I think he is a good enough researcher, and with Lenny's help is able to eliminate the obvious quickly mm-hmm. and is starting to reach for connections. Sure. If that makes sense. Absolutely. So, so so a lot of that. Gotcha. Just trying to look for anything that this city could have come from. Yeah, so uh once 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 you eliminate the impossible whatever remains, however improbable must be correct. So mm. whatever I can find that makes sense at all because at the end of the day we saw a fucking underground city that didn't exist and was not there until this hole opened up Mm -hmm. and nobody knows about it and there's no (sighs) history of it well the way I see it we've got two separate mysteries that are connected somehow yes we have the mystery of the city and the mystery of the approximations. Yes. Now, 
My current theory is pocket dimensions, uh, or perhaps a split-off plane, like a demi-plane that got cut off somehow. Not a bad way to go. It's a lot of space and a lot of stuff for a demi-plane, though. Oh, there's a few things that we could go for. I mean, demi-planes certainly are an option. Uh, there's certainly been interplanar travel, though we haven't had word of something like that in nearly 50 years or so. Well, maybe we might have word of it now. Maybe. There's also been, oh, sundry magical pulses that have happened over the years. Could have opened something up. Lord knows the unspinning spinner that he had. Uh, that certainly could be an element of uh, that's at play. Absolutely could. Something that shuts off magic. Probably was whatever it was that you know dropped you all down in there. Uh, Cecil makes a note to let the to let Luca know to have whoever is looking out there check for magic that has ended, mm -hmm. like residue of illusion magic, but also I'd imagine big magic like that, if it was stopped, would leave echoes. Sure, Cecil's not going out there to do that. Somebody else who's already there should mm -hmm. do that. But absolutely, go ahead. I want you to roll me a history check. Uh, 12. With a 12, you spend a good chunk of time diving into the crypts libraries to try and find anything that can lead you in any direction of this. Um, you're trying to look up old wizards, mm -hmm. you know, maybe somebody that might have gone listening, missing, especially from the outriders, uh, who might have been doing research into ancient uh into ancient civilizations and lost civilizations naturally there are a handful of you know lost peoples throughout mm -hmm. the years that this entirely could have been from um you know every society has their own version of legends of duragar the dark the deep dwarves and deep gnomes that potentially could be from underneath following that similar wizard path you start going down uh maybe transmutation gone wrong um going down legends of changelings and uh doppelgangers mm -hmm. but nobody has heard from them like the last time any either changeling or doppelganger was seen was well over 30 or 40 years ago there's not been a single reported sighting of either of those peoples in that time especially in this part of the world you also know that transmutation magic for whatever reason for some wizard just seems to go hangwire so maybe there's something to that but with a 12 that's kind of what you're able to get two handfuls of loose threads were okay so the design and layout of everything yeah. was very specific were the materials very specific and strange or was it so that would be something you would need to get back down there to do a sure. little bit more research into and you know from talking to luca uh, that is something he fully aims to get support on when you go up to the seat okay. is he wants to make sure that among other things that you are able to find, one of those things is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, is like essentially expertise, people who are masters in their field, whether or not they are an outrider or not, you know, for like, he wants to get people down there because he is fiendishly curious himself. I just want to tie one more loose end. When we went to, when we were there and... Uh, Cecil fell in the big hole. Um, <laughs> there was talks of a camp, like up. Yes. We figured out that was Elijah's, right? That was Elijah's. Okay, camp, yeah. <laughs> just checking. Just checking. He collected his stuff before you all left. What he told you, he um, took the spinner out and spun it for the very first time, and the cavern dropped. And that time, oh shit! What? Oh uh, what? Yeah, that that he spun the spinner. So he made the hole. He made the hole. Oh, fuck. Okay, did he... Oh, shit, fuck. Okay, we're going back to this then. Okay. Um, I uh, smash cut to a game of chess. Yes. Bah! Um, so, Elijah, if you could, um, knight to e4, mm. tell me if... How did that hole come about? 
the big one, the obvious Look, one. It's it's like I told you that night. I we got out that I got out there. I got my camp set up, and I spun it. And it's like I'm not I'm not like you. Like my magic comes from like me knowing how to like read and whatnot. And it, when I spun it, it's okay. You still have value. Anyway, <laughs> I spun it. The thing that I made, my hypothesis was I would be unable to spin the magic on my own, right? But what happened was uh, everything dropped about four stories. And that time I was fine. Like, my leg, like, I was okay. So I scooped up the, the, the spinner. Apparently, like, I unsealed some kind of magical sealing that I did to that room. And so I went in, and then I saw the big glowy green place... And didn't realize that um, there was a uh, the, the staircase wasn't finished, and then I fell, and that's when I hurt my leg. And that's also right around the time I saw the approximations. For the good of the audience, I would like to make an insight check. Okay. Uh, he's telling the truth. You know Stuart Bailey very well. He's late 30s to early 40s the two like he is younger than you but you've known each other for most of your lives at this point right so when the hole happens then did you feel I suppose it's hard, would have been hard for you to feel other magic disappearing as you're losing your own, wouldn't it? Well, I don't lose my magic. I just lose my ability to, like, grab onto sure. it. You would lose your magic. Although I'd be curious at, like, extended exposure. I'm sorry, continue. Let's um, test that on Arabin. If we eliminate the impossible, that remains must be true. So my best guess is some kind of intricate illusion magic that lasted so long it became real to an extent. Walk walkable, livable, breathable. Certainly possible. I've heard of such kinds of things happening, although not the desecration, for lack of a better word. It'd be, I'd be interested to know if whatever your top did, if it removed or eliminated whatever magic was there, if it just um, paused it. I wonder if it'll come back. Well, possibly, possibly. If I think you would be onto something, if there were like more dirt were to be put on top of it, yes, yeah, it would probably end up resealing eventually. Uh, assuming I didn't would, like yes. completely, assuming I didn't like get rid of like the source of the magic, that yes. would be one thing. But if it, if I got rid of the source, then it would be gone, and right, nothing yes. would will bring it back unless somebody were to recast the same magic again. That would do it, of course. But, but it would make absolutely no sense for the source of the magic to be so close to the top of whatever this was. You would put the source somewhere down in that city, or at least in the mouth of that cave. Unless the source was just to protect that particular room. Possible. Uh, we never did figure out what that room was, but there was no ceiling either. Very strange. Well, the ceiling fell in when I did the whole thing. So you're saying the ceiling was unstable? Probably. I mean, there was magic to used to hold it up. Likely. True. I wonder why that part was unstable. Didn't Jay say that transmutative shit was kind of kind of hinky? Yeah, yes. If there was like... This is player Griffin, sorry. You're blowing my mind. Uh, <laughs> if there was like transmutation involved, cover a hole. Or just shoddy workmanship. It could just be shoddy workmanship as well. Like, but know, whatever somebody... it was underneath was cobblestone and paved, so it was nicely done and maintained. Mm -hmm. The terracotta was there, so... But the top, if, you know, mm. maybe that, may maybe they just weren't really good with, like, roof masonry, and they... Phone, just phoned in the ceiling. Well, you know, they yeah. put the ceiling in, and then, like, they just used magic, because who's going to turn off the magic? That would be silly. So, do you think if we went to different air like could we walk 300 feet towards the city above the ground quote unquote spin your top again and create another hole entirely possible hold on i'm gonna write that down don't mind me just prepping featherfall bailey pulls out a scroll that clearly he has been keeping notes about this particular expedition on uh rolls up a new bit makes that note rolls it back rolls it back up tucks it back in i will uh make sure to uh inform some of the uh, well the our, our expeditioners 
expeditionaries of that possibility when we get out there. Hirelings. Underlings. <laughs> We're the brains. They're the muscle. It's needed. Check. In, in the time, uh, I would assume that maybe the high captain or whoever sent out scouts back to the city area. Mm-hmm. Um, was any other points of, ent- of entry found? Let's find out. This role is going to change the course of this campaign. I it, hope not. Very likely. Oh, God. Based on your conversation, Cecil, uh, with Elijah, they go back out. And he takes another couple of spins in that area. And what they're able to find is uh, they are not able to create more holes. But going back down into the city, they also realize there are no other buildings that go quite that high as the one that you entered into. It looks like Bailey, they don't know if it's because the ground, the way it is set up, the way the city is. But for whatever reason... Like, the highest point of the city just happened to be where this clearing is. They're able to use that clearing to uh, essentially make a base camp. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, For, yeah, yeah. Cool. Sure, you know, sure. whatever this expedition is. That's uh, kind of what I wanted to help with. I wanted to set up not just for Ignis, but mm-hmm. also, like, supplies in general. Essentially, just, like, a, a quick, like, almost crane setup. Mm-hmm. Just so that we have a... Uh, we have... Maybe even like a, a, like an a, elevator kind of sort deal, sort of like an elevator, but mostly just like a way to easily bring down and take up supplies. Sure, and also then maybe just like some ladders, so like some some established engineering mm-hmm. to get people and supplies in. Give me a persuasion check at disadvantage. Mm, persuasion, yes, for building. For convincing the Knight Commander to let you go back out there when he knows full well he wants to send you to the seat as well. Well, I mean, this is during the um, this is during the month. He wants to keep you close, we keep got, you safe. We got, I'm trying to help us. Do I get to re-roll the nat one on disadvantage? I will let you re-roll the nat one at disadvantage. Do I keep the other die? You can keep the other die. I don't know how this works with dis- with Lucky. We're playing in the space. Oop, on the table, on. Oh, fuck, it's a two. <laughs> <laughs> so, a two. It was meant to be. Oh, my God. What was the... You rolled a two? Yeah. I okay. rolled I rolled a one uh-huh. on the lower die, and I re-rolled that die, and it was a two. The Knight Commander shakes his head. Like, no, no. Look, I know you've got good ideas. Yeah. I like what you're saying. What I want you to do is... Honestly, if you can sketch it out, like send, get the blueprints ready to go. Yeah. We will use whatever you make, but All right. I don't want to send you back out there. I need as many firsthand accounts I gotcha. to send up there as okay. possible. I hear you. I'm sorry. No, I no, no, it. no. It's fine. It's just like I'm trying to be ready. No, I appreciate that. Once we get things taken care of, honestly, if the three of you are amenable to it, we'll probably send you down with whoever we can get signed on to work with us. All right. And the other thing, if you'll allow it, is I want to take up Arabin on his offer and do some cursory research on the goo, mm. on the, fl- the ooze goo. Okay. Mostly like, yeah, find a find an external spot away from the crypt and away from bearing, mm-hmm. like per the uh, high captain's uh, orders, mm-hmm. um, and have Arabin, even, and if Cecil wants to come, like they can come along too. Sure. I, I would sure. offer. Yeah. We were all there to see it. Absolutely. Hell, hell, honestly, I would like... Bailey, do you want to bring your damn top in case this thing goes really sideways? Yeah, sure. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like, yeah, basically under as controlled circumstances as we can, mm-hmm. I would try to, like, basically uncap the vial and dump the ooze out onto the ground and try to do the quickest, like, identify, detect magic that mm-hmm. I can to figure out whatever I can about this thing. Okay. I'm just standing there with my sword, like, yeah, <laughs> ready. <laughs> I need a dexterity check from you. Okay. Just a straight dex? Straight dex. Because you're, you've got to do this quick, because you know this stuff just evaporates mm-hmm. pretty quickly. Anyone have any juice to help me? Anyone have any tricks? I cast... Protection from evil and good. I'll take it. Hey. Uh, I also cast alarm. Mm. <laughs> Just in case. Sh- look, man. 
Hey. Do I have anything? No, you're you're you are experimenting with a capital E. I don't want to cast mending on the goo. <laughs> you do not. Um Okay. So what are you you're just rolling a this is dexterity ability check. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Twenty one. Nineteen okay. on the die. Okay. You can cast both identify and detect magic on it. Cool. Um what does remind me again exactly what do, which one would you cast first? Um honestly I could have pre-cast detect magic because that's concentration. I can keep that up. Okay. Identify takes a minute to cast, so it'd probably be like working through that as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Um so you- Detect Magic tells me I see a faint aura around any visible creature that bears magic, and if so, I learn its school of magic. You, if any. You pick up transmutation. Okay. Identify, would this thing be considered a creature or an object? Creature. If I touch a creature, I learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting it. You are getting the hints of a very powerful spell. Oh. You don't know what spell it was. It is not something that came out of a book. It was something that was created. Oh, shit. You you can tell that there is the transmutation. There is an element of it that is endemic to whatever this was. And another element. There are essentially two transmutation spells that are working at cross purposes. Oh. And in that moment, as soon as you realize that is when the damn hell? it vanishes. Fuck. Evaporates into nothing. Well, I suppose that's what was bound to happen. Huh. Um, Curious. Very. In that, did I learn anything about these creatures in terms of, like, we discovered that they have a resistance to, like, magical force. Mm-hmm. Did I learn any of... Would I have happened to learn any of those properties in my investigation? Nothing more than you've already learned. Okay. Just a resistant to magical force. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. And and would I know enough to identify this as what Meredith would call big magic? Absolutely. Okay. All right, y'all. So, best to my estimations... Um, it's what the high captain and the seeker would say is above my pay grade. Yeah, I could have told you that. I don't know what the damn hell this thing is. The most like transmutative stuff I deal with is with my like magical mending. That's the most I've really dabbled with. And that's pretty beginner level. This is whatever. This is the other end of the spectrum of beginner level. This is expert level. We're talking like fancy wizard with a big hat who lives in a tower level transmutation and like multiple instances of it there were like two distinct energy signatures or like residues two distinct somethings but they were both transmutative i can at least glean that much it almost leads me to believe that something happened to these things like someone made these things i can press to digitate a bit but that's the extent of my transmutation knowledge it's not my field either no, do, like, do we have a transmutation expert in bearing? The dice comes out. Nat one. Nope. Uh, but I'm lucky I re-rolled nat ones. So. Yeah, but <laughs> I rolled it. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a shot. Good um, Good argument. And I suppose it, it, down the line, like, clearly these samples are volatile. Like, they're, we can only do so much. I, that was one of the, I'm sweating. Like, I was working fast there. Like, normally I can take my damn time with these things, my sweet old time, but if uh, suffice to say, if we bump into more of these approximations, like, any samples we can collect, I think is going to go a long way. Like, yeah. that's, there's so much more I think I could do with this, and especially an expert. Absolutely. Our expert's going to be, our expert's going to be useless, not useless, but we should be able to provide them with some samples if we're going to bring them all the way there. Well, next time we go down there. Bring a few extra jars. Have yeah. there been any reports in the weeks and months of other approximations within this city? Or Nope. Actually, you're talking about the, the underground city. Yes, um, sorry, the underground city. Yes, there have not been 
um, any attacks. People, uh, as the Outriders have been going out there, they have been warned to operate with the most abundance of caution. Um, but with that caution, they have been able to kind of peek out and see uh, some other approximation operating within the city, but they are not engaging. They are observing, they are watching, they are seeing what is happening. Right. They have not had any hypotheses of patterns or anything like that, but they are able to... Essentially, they have secured the area that Stuart Bailey was in and um, are beginning to work on building out the elevators, not only to get the freight elevators up from, you know, where the campsite is down into the city, but also from the tower where you encountered the approximations, but down into the rest of the city as well. One more lore question. I think, yeah. And I think it's a quick one. So we keep calling it a city. Yeah. Is it the scope of a city? Is it is it bigger than bearing? It is bigger than bearing. Is it okay. bigger than the seat? No. Okay. Is it bigger than a bread box? Weirdly, no. Holy shit. <laughs> is it Polly Pocket? One. But we're also very tiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta I gotta write that down. That's a really good quest. That's a really good pocket sized quest. But um. Tss. Is it one giant underground cavern, or is it a series? As far as they can tell, it is one big cavern, but they are operating with that caution because they don't have the support they need, so there sure. may be more. Okay. Black Reach. It is very Black Reach. Cool. Love it. Hate it. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been about a month since your investigation of the Flux three of you take time to prepare yourselves to set out up to the seat. Harper, you get Ignis packed up now with a little bit of extra room in the shell. Mm -hmm. You're able to stash away a couple of different outfits and whatnot for your journey out. I hang the horseshoe over the threshold. Naturally, it's only polite. Cecil, you... Uh, at prepare Katie for her first time out of bearing. Yep. Oh, shit. She has never really left, not more for than a night or two before. So she is absolutely bouncing off the roof with excitement. Um, and you are just looking down a road that you know was much more treacherous than the last time you traveled it. Just make sure she's armed. Daggers. Ready to go and what little magic you have been able to impart upon her. Yes. Erebin, you set about getting things ready. The entity has remained silent this entire time. You've actually wandered around from time to time without the locket on. It doesn't protest. It gives you your space. But you think for a moment, maybe, maybe you'll leave him behind. But a final moment of compulsion as you leave the room, you grab it and slot it, and it is warm and comfortable across your neck. And the three of you, along with Stuart Bailey and the Night Captain, a few other Outrider regulars, saddle up and ride out on a unseasonably brisk early autumn morning. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and our network at ghostlightmedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can also find me on Twitter at TQLoudly, Griffin at Griffcold, and Ryan at RyanRoll20. You can find Justin on TikTok at Just, Justin Michael, and myself at TQLoudly. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode, and until then, remember to double-check your packing job.
This has been a Ghostlight Media production.